You did an interview yesterday, speaking of... Oh, here we go. I know exactly I, you, what you're going to say. You have to, though, because you did That's an fine. interview yesterday yeah. with Fox News, and you were talking to Kennedy, which who knew Kennedy was doing interviews for Fox News? I didn't Not e- I. I don't even know why I was there, first of all, but okay, yeah. <laughs> so she asked you about, um, you know, being a mom and traveling with the babies and, you know, sick people on planes, and then she stumbled onto vaccinations where you said in response that, quote, there's pediatric group called Homestead um, or Homefront. Now I have pregnancy brain, got them confused. They've never vaccinated any of their children, and they haven't had one case of autism, and now one in 88 boys is autistic. That is a really <clears throat> scary statistic. That is a terrifying statistic. Statistic. I mean, listen, here's the thing. It, vaccines are not something I wanted to publicly come out and speak on. Um, I sort of got bombarded in this interview and thrown off guard. Um, you know, there's really scary statistics out there, and to each their own. Um, I've read too many books, and I, you know, autism wasn't prevalent like it is now years ago. So something's going on, whether it's the chemicals in our food or the vaccines, because there's more mercury and all other sorts of things in them. Something's happening. We can't really ignore that. I choose to believe that I think it's in the vaccines. Um, But again, to each their own, and that's where I stand on it. I'm looking at the Autism Speaks website right now that that says that the studies have not found a link between vaccines and, and autism when it comes to medical things. And there is a variety of information on both sides of the equation, mm-hmm. whether it's vaccinating your children or whether or not um, to eat gluten or whether or not right. peanut, peanuts are dangerous at a certain age. And that's why it's your choice. You choose what's exactly. right for your family, and that's up to you, and that's a private matter. I think that you... This is not something I wanted to even... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even want this to be known in the public, but... Um, it's our decision, and, and that's the end of the story. Sort of on that vein, are you nervous now that you're so very much in the public light that something that could be very personal, that you had no interest in telling anybody, yeah. is going to be front and center uh, in the news? I think I'm I'm seeing it from an interesting interesting perspective now that I'm I'm close to Kristen. I'm, I'm watching her sort of go through things because no one really knows who I am, and so we get places and there's paparazzi waiting for her, and I'm sort of witnessing it in a different way, and I think... She's handled it really wonderfully. I think it is hard because I sort of have no filter and I say what's on my mind. and I'm like, ah, whatever, and it's probably not the best thing. So I'm kind of learning from her and watching her go through it. Um, but I do know that it was a, you know, it's, a fr- it's frustrating, I think, if you feel like someone's trying to, like, get you. That's really frustrating because you're like, what the heck just happened? Like, why is this happening? I thought I'd be talking about fashion. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm talking about politics and vaccines. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's part of, unfortunately, part of the nature of the beast when yeah. you become, you know, a name and you become famous and you're inviting people in to understand, you know, you and your lifestyle. Then all of a sudden, every facet of your lifestyle is is of interest, and you have a very famous husband, so. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, you know, the bad part about it is it ultimately makes you very closed off, um, which I don't think is a good thing, but you just, you have to be so careful what you say because one little thing can be turned into this huge thing. Well, I don't want to end it on that note, yeah. of course. Let's, Let's get back to great. fashion yeah. before I wrap it up here. Who are your celebrity fashion icons of the moment? Yeah. Not, don't give me Marilyn Monroe, don't oh, give me Audrey Hepburn, no. don't give me you old got, people. You got the wrong girls. Kate Moss, good. baby. Kate Moss, okay. She's so chic and sexy, and she just looks good all the time, whether it's on the red carpet or on the street. Perfect. I love Blake Lively. I just think she always looks really effortless. She goes like really over the top and adventurous with her fashion, and then she keeps her glam really simple, which always makes it look like her. She doesn't look like she's playing a part. And I love her, and I think she's just so sexy. <laughs> she is very, she's very hot, very all American hot. You remind me a little bit of Blake Lively, really? actually. And you have a little bit of the Kate Moss look. That's why we love each you other. You do have a little more of those sort of grungier Kate Moss look. But both of those girls are very, very thin. Who is? You, that, that <laughs> doesn't baby count. In my you have belly. a baby in there. Kate Moss, Blake Lively, they're oh. both very, very thin. Oh, I thought you. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I, said, I, like, I have a baby oh. in my belly. They feel like they know me or they're my friend. So they're like, Adrena, hi, how are you? Like, oh my God, what's been going on? Are you still Justin or Cor? Like, what's, I'm like, oh my goodness. 